Well, let's get some of the news out of the way first. Right. Roman Reigns tested positive for COVID out of the main event with Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar was added to the five-way. And uh, going into this show, going into this show, Big E was coming out the champion. And so Big E losing the title was a direct result of Roman getting COVID and them having to scramble to come up with a new idea. Now, my presumption, uh, I don't have this 100% confirmed, but this is certainly the what I what people have told me they believe is what's going on here. And here's the thing with WWE, everybody. When there's a storyline involving Roman and Brock, like the people that know where this is going are Roman, Brock, and Vince, and probably mm. Paul Heyman, and sure. maybe Bruce Pritchard. Yeah. So you could, I could talk to 100 people there, and 100 of them would tell me, I think this is what's happening, but I don't know for sure. But I think that the idea here is that they're doing champion versus champion at WrestleMania. Roman will be the SmackDown champion. Uh, Brock will be the Raw champion. Uh, either unification match or just champion versus champion like they do at Survivor Series. Uh, so it is possible... Uh, the idea was that they were going to shoot a big angle for WrestleMania on the show today. I have no idea what the angle was. I suppose it's possible that uh, uh, maybe Brock was going to... I don't even want to say anything. But all I know is that Biggie was going to leave as champion until all of this happened. So, Main event, WWE title, Big E versus Kevin Owens versus Seth Rollins versus Bobby Lashley versus Brock Lesnar. So they did the first, the three Raw challengers, and then Big E, the champion, came out fourth, and then Brock came out last, which annoyed me at first, although Brock's reaction just blew everyone else away, so that's why they did it. So this is the match I noticed where there was way more zooming and camera cuts than usual, so maybe Kevin Dunn showed up late, or maybe he only does main events now. I don't know. But I don't care, because this match ruled. You and I use the same term to describe this. It was a sprint this was five dudes spamming finishers like little kids Dude, playing wrestling video games. This was like one of those those uh, Lesnar matches that Heyman helps put together, where it's just finisher, 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 finish. And you had five guys. Yeah, so that's a lot of finishers. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of finishers on the outside. That's a lot of uh, you know v rampant violence. I thought this match. You know, this reminded me of. Although as great as it was, it wasn't as great as what I'm going to say. The uh, the Goldberg Lesnar match at WrestleMania in some ways that went five minutes and was fucking one of the best five minute matches I ever saw in my whole life. What did this go like eight or nine? Uh, this went longer than that, uh, eight minutes. Uh, I think it was supposed to go longer, but like uh, here's a lesson, everybody. If you're in WWE and you happen to be listening to this and you put these matches together, uh, these matches don't need to go long. They Most only need to go as long as they need to. And uh, this match went 8 minutes and 19 seconds, and there ain't no fucking way on any planet that this had gone 15 minutes, it would have been oh, better. Oh, not a chance in It would have been worse, absolutely positively guaranteed. Because the way that they worked it, it, the beginning, the middle, and the end, like, everything was perfect. There wasn't too much, there wasn't too little, there was exactly enough when they got to the finish. So 8 minutes was a perfect length for a, a Brock Lesnar five-way killing dudes and it's funny because even though it was only eight minutes, it actually felt longer, even though it wasn't, because, you know, they they put Lesnar out of action early, and then he made his big comeback there at the end. And I guess he was probably out of the match for a good five minutes. Yep. But it felt like he was in for eight minutes of violence. And, and anyway, this was an awesome sprint. Yeah, it was, it was tremendous. So, and it wasn't as much as it was, it was, it was guys spamming finishers, but it also had some storyline and logic going on. So... Uh, Seth and Owens struck a deal. They were going to work together to try and take out the other monsters in this match. They were the two smallest dudes. And they never broke up that team. That, that team never came to blows. They, again, worked well for each other or worked well with each other and got along. And uh, it was Big E that was down in the ring. And Owens tries to send on and he gets the knees up. But that just leaves still E is in perfect position for a Rollins frog splash out of nowhere. So they were destroying everyone until uh, Lesnar returned from the dead. And we should mention, by the way, that Lesnar got taken out of this. The bell rings, and Lesnar immediately begins to suplex everyone. Until he's taken out first by Big E, who returns to the ring and like uh, just close lines him out of the ring. And then he's out of the ring. Bobby Lashley spears Brock Lesnar through the barricade. Take about 30 seconds to get there. But he spears him through the barricade, and then Lesnar's gone for several minutes. So, so st strike one to Lashley. He's gotten the advantage on Lesnar once. The match continues. Lesnar gets back in there. He's suplexing everyone. He's F5ing everyone. 
And by the way, I knew Brock Lesnar was a huge, huge man, but he's in there with Bobby Lashley. He's in there with Big E, and he just dwarfs them. He has many weight divisions above these two dudes, and they're huge. So anyway, so Lesnar returns. He takes out Rollins knowing he's beating them up, but then Lashley gets a hold of him somehow, and he gets the big, the, the hurt lock. He gets it on Brock, the full Nelson, as promised. And Brock's trapped in the middle of the ring. He's got nowhere to go. He may have no choice but to submit here. Uh, Lashley's prophecy is going to come true. But Big E breaks it up. Big E saves Brock and throws Lashley out of the ring. Hits the big ending on Lashley. Throws him out. Goes for the big ending on Brock. And as big as Brock is, I know he went up. I know he goes up great, but Big E had no trouble getting that big dude up on his shoulders for the big ending. Except he went too far, and Brock slipped behind, hits the F5, and he wins. So this new WWE champion, as soon as he is pinned, Big E becomes an afterthought. And the focus is on Brock holding his new title and laughing as Bobby Lashley sneers at him. So they could do Lesnar Roman at Mania. There's still the Rumble that needs a main event. There's probably a February pay-per-view or a March pay-per-view that needs a main event too. I think we're finally going to get Lashley versus Lesnar, and it's going to rule. Actually, I know that everyone's uh, upset about Big E losing the title, but uh, plenty of time for Big E to win that title again. But the fact of the matter is, if you look at the storyline that they have been doing for the last God only knows how long, Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns, champion versus champion, Paul Heyman returning and having to choose a side in that match. I mean, that's going to be a pretty big match by WWE standards. So that's WrestleMania, everybody. I won't be there, but I'll be watching it on the on, cock. On Peacock. It is Wrestling Observer Live today. I'm Oreo the Orca. Do you have a blowhole rating system? Like, if you're really excited about a match, it gives you yeah, this, six squirts. This match was was uh, two and three quarter holes, if you must know. So I was watching this show, and they had a bunch of videos for this Liv Morgan about how, oh, my whole life I've been a wrestling fan. Oh, I'm going to win my first title ever. There's children cheering and going, oh, ho, ho. you know what I'm saying? Okay. I do indeed. <laughs> hey, Danhausen, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear Danhausen? Hey! Hey, look at that holy hey. mother of God. Look what we've done here. You broke a leg. Is that true? Uh, it was broken in half, snapped in two. The doctor said it was a tibia and a fibula. Uh, I'm a whale and not a doctor, but is it not a fibula and not a fibia? A fibula? What I know. Perhaps what? the doctor lied to Dan Housen. You know, Dan Housen, if you were a whale, you wouldn't have broken your leg. This is true because whales don't have legs. What did you grow up watching as a little evil man? Kane ripping off the door when he debuted. Yes. How old were you, Dan Helsen, when that match took place? Oh, about, uh, what was that, 1997, so about 700 years old. Oh. Also, one time Dan Helsen had Dolph Ziggler's theme song as his alarm, and it went off in class. <laughs> no, he didn't. Yes, it's true. Dan Helsen likes Dolph Ziggler. You like Dolph Ziggler? He's good matches. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.